If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist & Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist & Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products. I'm Bob Coach with Stromquest. Today we're going to cover the workings and the components in a modulating burner, gas burner scenario. It's uh, not really a very small burner. It happens to be a Maxon that can produce, if we have enough gas, three and a half million BTUs of heat. Some of the components that you see up front are the, the gas valves, the scanner, the blower motor, spark ignition transformer in the flame safeguard itself. Now let's start with the first regulator. In this burner here, most, most plants are going to have relatively high pressure gas. This is, we're going to pretend, and this one does have five pounds coming to a vented relief regulator. It's going to take the five pounds down to somewhere around 14 inches. That 14 inches of gas is what's going to go to both the pilot regulator up here on top, and it's also going to go into pilot regulator. You'll also know that on this pilot gas train going into the burner, there's actually two, two valves in series. The reason for the two valves is if one valve leaks a little bit, the other one's supposed to catch the leak. So we don't fill up a combustion air chamber and then light it off and have a small boiler room or a burner room uh, disturbance. We're going to come back around to the main gas train and you'll notice coming across the bottom of the burner back there is going to a Maxitrol regulator which is an appliance regulator. Appliance regulators reg run, regulate only during a run time. While, the, while there's gas flowing through it. That's going to take our 7 to 14 inches down to the, the requirements of the burner itself. We're going to come around. And this one here, by the way, is built as a demo. Everything's really close. Usually you wouldn't see anything quite this complicated. We're going to come around to a Maxon 5000 valve, which is a gate valve. They'll handle high pressure if necessary. We're going to come to a normally open vent valve and a second um, gate valve max on before it goes into the burner. The two valves here, along with the vent valve, do the same job as that. If something leaks, for instance, this valve develops a leak while it's off, this vent valve, which would normally go to a roof or outside, will allow any leakage that comes off there to be vented away from the burner. The second gas valve will open when this thing starts. This will close. We have a Honeywell Magitrol motor that controls a butterfly valve that's actually going to control the gas to the burner in the gas air mixture. So we can go from way low fire to quite quite high, three and a half million BTUs. We won't get to three and a half million BTUs today because our gas supply uh, for this demo uh, is just a small propane tank and uh, it will not evaporate three and a half million BTUs of gas. So let's see if we can start this up once. Lower motor, flame safeguard, RM7895. The other components that I missed a minute ago is an air proving switch. Make sure the fan is blowing air. And also high and low gas pressure switches so that the gas coming to the burner is going to be somewhere close so we don't have not enough gas. It'll shut off or if we have way too much gas it's going to shut it off. There are manual reset type devices to ensure that we have the proper gas burner gas to the burner before we try to light it off. Uh, if we turn it, go come around to the front of the burner and just look for a minute. 
This is a typical Maxon oven pack burner. It's a little hard to see, but the air and the gas are going to flow around the cone and mix, and it's going to come out as a big flame. Let's go around and start this thing up one time. Yeah, we can see what's happening on our flame safeguard. It says we're in the standby situation. It means we're ready to go as soon as we get a signal from a limit control. It says start. And it's going to blow the gas out of the burner so that the next time we start, we're ready to go. And that's the basic components of a burner and how it works. Let's, uh, let's explain some of the components of the... Uh, flame safeguard on this burner. The flame safeguard is what tells the burner to light, make sure everything is safe before it lights, and make sure that there's a flame when there's supposed to be so we're not blowing raw gas into a burner. The um, components of that are the pilot valves, spark ignition transformer. This one has a UV scanner, which sees UV light, which is very good on gas will not see an oil flame. And then the flame safeguard itself, which in this case is an RM7895, it has a removable display, which does not have to be on there to run, but this display gives us fault histories, uh, gives us flame signals, very nice to troubleshoot. In fact, this device is almost impossible to troubleshoot without the, the display. Again, this is Bob Coach with Stromquist Company. And this is the basics of a burner operation. If you have any questions, you can call or contact, contact the burner specialist at StromQuest. Of course, all burners are somewhat different, but the principles they operate are all the same. If you need to control it or measure it, StromQuest and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, StromQuest and Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.